to download because that was still in those days was still the dial-up days, and you need to download the uh, Linux to use it. And as more people started using Linux, these Linux India user groups and the Linux user groups, they started to form, and slowly we had more and more user groups, and then events started slowly, one by one, specifically uh, Linux-focused events. So there was this Bang Linux, which was organized in Bangalore, and which later progressed into FOSS.in in future. And around that time, in 1999, Indian Linux project started, so, and then so on, it evolved to, ultimately what to call the fuel kit, I talked to that. So the beginning of the in Linux project, the basic goal was that uh, Linux desktop it supported in English and many other languages, but there was no Indian language support. So the idea was that whatever you could do in Indian languages on the in, uh, English in Indian on the Linux desktop, you should have the same support for Indian languages. Basically, using in any application, you should be able to type in your language, you should have the other facilities that are there, for example, like a spell checker or a dictionary, etc. So it was started by Prakash Advani and Venkatesh Sriharan in 1999. It started as a waiting list, and there were a lot of discussions, etc. And around for one year, it kept continuing what needs to be done, how it needs to be done, and so on. And finally, it was realized like a list will not do. We need somebody to kind of sit and work on this. So that's when freeOS.com, which was being run by Prakash, he incubated, and uh, they got me into this project. So I was also just out of college, and then I had no clue, and uh, I, only after a year, I realized that I had bit into something which I, more than I could chew. So it was still list only, but, uh, I had spent some time figuring out what needs to be done and kind of what are the different aspects that we need to get the language support properly. And then finally, to around 2000, we started having some bits falling into place, one of which was Unicode support. Up till 1999-2000, Linux also did not have proper Unicode support. So the only application which had a full Unicode support was, it was an application called UDIT which worked on all platforms, for Windows, Linux, and Mac, and it's provided Unicode editing with different fonts. So where the guy was that he did a great effort, and for a long time that was kind of the lifeline for people who wanted to use Unicode. So we got the basic bits, etc., and then we started uh, working on that. And towards the end of 2001, that's when we had our first meeting where we, a lot of the interested folks, who was started working in this domain had met uh, at an event that is the Linux Bangalore. And then in 2002, we had uh, the Indic Computing Meet. So, a lot of other technology people, people from HP, Microsoft, IBM, and so on, and a lot of uh, free software guys, everybody got together in September 2002 and we did a two day, full, two full days brainstorming on Indic Computing what needs to be done, how it needs to be done, what are the kinds of resources that we need, and so on, who can provide us the support, etc. And then slowly, once we got at that, and then we decided what needs to be done, so there were multiple events and workshops that were done. And also, while in, in Linux primarily, I was looking into Hindi language support, we also had a project start for other languages, like SMC was the Sathantar Malayalam Computing for Malayalam, Ankur was for Bangla, Utkarsh was for Gujarati, and there was a Utkal for Oriya, and Pun Linux for Punjabi, and so on. Each language kind of had its own group. It was not that everybody was working in isolation, they were connected, and we actually did an event where we brought everyone together to discuss and progress on the same. So here it's on just photos. So this is the CD that brought the change. I still have a copy preserved of it. 
And this is the first meetup when we had in Linux Bank in 2001. And you can see a young Fred <laughs> with a bag. Still with a bag. Yeah. And this is the Indie Computing Workshop that happened in Bangalore. So a lot of the folks came from across India. And we met brainstorm for two days and discussed, of course, you must be recognizing some places. There is the Venki who is standing there. And there's the extreme right is Sunil Abraham, who has also been part of the FOSS community for a long while. And the extreme left is Ravikant from Delhi, who is also active FOSS for Hindi. And in between Vijay Pratap is, and so on. Uh, that person bending over is Ajish Kotamkar. And this was the first materialization of the event. So what we did was to have the Indic font workshop. We had a few people from Nepal and Bangladesh also coming in. So the focus of this event was that uh, that time we did not have Indian language fonts also ready. So we gathered all the knowledge as to how a font is to be designed, what are the skill sets needed to do the font, how to make a Unicode font. And around that time, this uh, technology called OpenType also came in, where the font uh, earlier you had to make for every shape, you need to make an independent cliff, what is called a cliff or the shape. Using OpenType, you could put some logic where, based on whatever characters you have typed in, the logic would do the implementation of selecting the glyphs from the font file and displaying it. So there are some other background uh, programs which run like at that time point of time it was called Pango which did it for GNOME and uh, Font for uh, Font Force which was a tool to use to create fonts. So this group created worked on creating a lot of fonts which became as free and open source fonts because up till that time we did not have proper free and open source fonts. And once we had the Hindi fonts running, we could now start doing some translation work. So a group got together to do translate GNOME into Hindi. So we started work. We, again, two, three days, people sat together and what all, starting with some basic applications, we did the translations. And this was the result of that early version of the desktop. This was, I think, some GNOME 2.0, some version. And around that time, keyboard was a rudimentary keyboard, which is basically what is uh, Linux systems use, what is called X Windows. And there was only one way to do keyboard input, which was quite of tedious to do that time. So we defined all the key maps required for Indian languages. IBUS, etc., came much later on. And in 2004, again, we got everybody who is working in the language field. We got all of them together in Mumbai and uh, again brainstormed how where we have reached, what all we have developed, uh, what further needs to be done, etc. So all the languages were represented and they further took their work, pro work progress and they started also releasing their own work in the different languages. This was one of the this current session going on. If you might see, there might be quite a lot of faces here. Maybe you might later on, if you look back, you will see those people have like gone ahead. They have somehow even found their own companies and successfully running companies and so on. And this was in the same 2004 in Linux Bangalore. We had like now something to show. We could put a Linux distro and we could configure it for Indian language and we could show multiple languages. So we set up a stall. So Linux Bangalore gave us a prominent space in the expo and we just set up a few PCs and then showed what all work was done. So this guy in the middle who is wearing the specs, you know, I forgot to tell you, he is a Tamilian. He came for the GNOME Hindi translation workshop. So initially we thought oh, a bit skeptical, but then his Hindi turned out to be quite good. So he made a lot of contribution in that early, early GNOME Hindi translation. What's his name? Uh, he was 
Ananda Shankar. I need to go back to my emails to search. And of course, these two guys, black t-shirts, those are the GNOME founders. Nat Friedman and Miguel Nikasa. And of course, as the Linux event started, uh, this became a custom to just sign on the poster. So I have a couple of posters where almost all the attendees of those events signed them up. And following up again on in 2005, we again went. So it must be becoming boring now. You keep meeting every time. Eh? But it was good. Like what the basic idea here was to like get everybody who is working together once in a year to one place and then discuss, brainstorm, and then again diverse, and then do their things, and then again collate whatever has been done. And this was at the Hindi translation workshop and we got some Hindi students to do some of the activities. This happened in Sarai in Delhi. The Sarai has been one organization also which hosted a lot of Indic events. Then further on there were other meetings, of course, as you can see more meetings. So every year we constantly met in different events and then brainstormed. The work kept progressing further. And I think around 2007 we were in a situation like almost all languages were supported on the Linux desktop. Uh, and prominently Guru, GNOME and KDE, etc. they had the full support. And also the inputs also kind of improved. The M17 and that was talked about, that was the time when we wrote those M17 tables which were used in another tool called Skim. There was a smart, uh, some common input method, but that was uh, it from IBUS scheme, which has an improvement over it. And the same, whatever the keyboards, etc., they got mapped to IBUS. So there were further, in meanwhile, also Firefox events started happening up where they started doing a lot of localization work. And Wikipedia was also getting active and they were organizing. And then there was Fuel project was initiated. Fuel was around, the, we were doing localization, but there was a lack of standardization in terminology. So again, uh, one guy, Rajesh Ranjan, he brainstormed this and then he found that this frequently used entries in localization. And he organized, uh, painstakingly organized a lot of meetings to get the Hindi terminology, Marathi, and the different languages. Again, a lot of meetings doing the brainstorming on the words and then standardizing on the terminology and so on. So all the different events at different periods. So after 2016, the people were quite active. Uh, but then from then 17 onwards, the community was started dispersing. One prominent reason was a lot of the people who were working on it, they were all uh, Red Hat employees, so because they were hired by Red Hat to do translations. So there was some decision to do away with a translation team. So they all moved on in their careers. And I was also, I was already since 2007, I was not full time. I was only full time until 2007. And uh, other localization activity was happening, a lot of other FOSS software those were happening, LibreOffice uh, was happening, it was being done by CDAC. Similarly, Firefox localization, Drupal, etc. Everybody was now having their own. If there was a FOSS community, there was a part of it which was also looking into the localization of that. So overall, at that time, it felt like, okay, we have done enough, we can sit back, let others take it forward. So only active community which kind of remained continuously activity, active was the Malayalam community. But then still uh, there are a lot of unfinished things uh, which are there and which need some activity, which needs effort from volunteers. So one part is spell checkers. So even though you can type, but uh, type in LibreOffice, but you cannot. The spell check is very rudimentary. We did provide some spell checking support but it is still very kind of basic and that needs to be extended and not much investment has gone in there also. Similarly, dictionaries or a lot of other software like OCR, TTS is all already there, but it needs to be tested and validated of that, okay, it works. 
properly and this is how we need to use it. And one idea which uh, was kind of abandoned halfway was the Indic computing handbook. So people got to write, started writing this handbook where it would document everything related to Indic, what needs to be done or what is Unicode, what are the key maps, how to design a font and all that. So that's one thing which we meant to do. And also reviving and continuing the FOSS localization work. So since uh, 17, the FOSS localization and different uh, all the projects that has also kind of stagnated. So if there are folks who are interested to continue, revive it, that's one area. And as I said, doing the documentation or even like just, you may not need to write the documentation, but even if you can just search around the net, see what all information is already available. If you can just collate that in one place, even that is also kind of sufficient to kind of create the awareness as to how Indian language need to be used and what is already available, how to use it, so on. So that's it from my side. So any questions if anyone has. And thanks to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak. What percent of the task is complete so far? So from a desktop perspective, when you have a desktop, it supports Indian languages, you can use Indian languages. But let's say if you're going to LibreOffice, you're typing a document, you're writing a book, the spell checking support is not good enough. So that's one area. And uh, other areas, if somebody wants to do text-to-speech, etc. Even though the stuff is there, it's not kind of validated to saying that, okay, this works fine and this is the, what you should use and so on. So if you're developing some systems around this which require Indian language support. So there are certain problems. So one of it is actually still driven by the lack of awareness or how to use it. And the second thing is like the validation as to how correctly does it work. So all this needs some activity. So that's where we want to kind of again revive the activity activities. So if folks are interested, we want to revive the groups and see what can be done and how it needs to be done. OCR is language dependent, OCR? Yes, OCR is language dependent. So OCR, there have been OCR works, but again, as I said, okay. there hasn't been much validation. Somebody saying, look, okay, it's this, use XYZ stuff. Yeah. And so it becomes like, for example, you are an organization. So it's like an NGO, you want to add all those forms, fill them. Now you want to scan them. So is that a proper tool? There may be tools but you need to figure out how to use it. There's no ready-made uh, guide which says that, okay, do this, 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 and this is how it will work for you, or use XYZ library, and it will work the best for you. So that needs to be done. So that's where we want some uh, activities. And again, people working for testing it out in different languages and then just collating it and saying, okay, this is what works, and this is what doesn't work, or it needs improvement, and so on. Okay, so that's it for my question. Yeah. So, uh, what do you suggest to the young developers or the college students? So, what, where did they should focus? I mean, so from 2010, sorry, 2022, uh, sorry, 2000, 2010, you know, there was a movement. A lot of people, you know, came together to work on this localization. So, what do you think is the need of power? Uh, yeah. So, one key thing is like. That movement, it was primarily centered around we want a Indian desktop, Indian desktop Linux. So much of the activities of all they were centered around that. That we somewhat achieved. The actual localized desktop, whether that had any use or not, that was a different question because even though we have translated a lot of the desktops, but how many people actually use them, that's something which was not assessed. And then one other aspect is that 2010 onwards, the kind there was this paradigm shift in the way people use computing. So it was no longer the PC. It was the phone which became the dominant thing. And that's one space where we did not look into that point of time. Of course, we just looked at the terminology, keyboard support, etc. 
that is something that was looked at and there are apps, people have worked on that. But there are other bits also, so for example, if there are a lot of apps, as I said, uh, if, we, if phone is the primary thing, then let's say if you are an organization or an NGO, you want to do certain things, what are the stuff that you need? What are the Indian language requirements that you have? There may be already stuff, so for like, example, take a spell checker or a dictionary, or if you want a spell checker for the phone, somebody may already have written it somewhere, but we don't know about it. Maybe it's not prominent. You need to kind of search, somebody needs to test it and then write a, just a blog or maybe just a note saying that, okay, this is what we have tried out and this app works best for so and so language. So it's just a bit of documenting it, collating and documenting. So there's quite a bit of activity like that, which can be do, done by students just to start with. And of course, the other key aspect has been that uh, GitHub etc. came around after 2010 and that's when we saw this massive explosion in open source and people getting involved in open source. Up till that time, point of time, you had these big projects which people would try to get into by filing bug reports or doing this or doing documentation, doing translation, but it was always kind of a bit of a pain to get in and be counted as a open source person. But now it's like very democratic and when anybody, you have an idea, you have the, the design, you do the code or you develop it, a few more people find it useful and on GitHub you are appearing and do improving it further and it evolves into a different community. So we could use that same model for, to develop the Indian language also. So that's why I just highlighted on some points. So it could be like built around use cases. For example, there was FOSS for NGOs. So what are the requirements in, from their side? So if those are kind of sought out, then we can see, okay, what needs to be done there, and then design some activity or derive some activities which need some volunteer work, which need some development work, and so on. So some folks, we need to kind of get all those requirements gathering part, and then we find or we just put it out saying, okay, this, this needs to be done. Who wants to get around or doing it? Then somebody can put in other design aspects, how you need to code or how you need to do that. Then the actual coding part, some other guy can come into it. Okay, so thanks for...